Mr. Ray, I appreciate your patience and, and diligence this afternoon in asking and answering these long questions. Um, you've, you've addressed everything with care and thought. You haven't played any video games while you're talking to us, so it's terrific. Um, Mr. Bankman fried leaked his written testimony to Forbes today. Uh, just one more link in a long chain of dissembling and, and lies from Mr. Bankman fried uh, So I think it's important to allow you to respond to anything he put in there on the record here with us. He really makes two pointed uh, assertions. One is that you haven't engaged with him and haven't allowed him access to his passwords and accounts. Can you explain uh, to the committee now why that is the appropriate course of action? Uh, well, for a couple of reasons. I mean, first of all, uh, we wanted an independent you know, examination. Uh, we didn't want to rely on people who were potentially compromised. And as we now sit here today, we know that was a wise decision, right? Yes. Second of all, uh, what he was asking for fundamentally was to allow access to a system that we know just hours after the bankruptcy filing, he had dissipated assets from the estate. Uh, so it, it, it's I think that's, those two are sufficiently good reasons I'll reclaim. The second broad point he makes is that were he allowed to, were he allowed to restart FTX, he could raise the financing and make customers whole. That's, I think, a, a, a fair paraphrasing of what he's asserting. Again, can you respond to that and whether that's, that's true and credible? In my, my history of, of doing corporate restructurings, I, I don't find that remotely believable because the first thing an investor would have to do is pay several billion dollars just to have the company you know, back to the position it was in. So it's, it's, it's a fantastic idea. It would be throwing good money after bad in the, in the biggest sense of the word, right? Correct. Uh, good, thank you. I just wanted to give you that opportunity. Uh, and I also want to associate myself with the, the, the very thoughtful line of questioning from both uh, Ms. Ocasio-Cortez and, and Mr. Timmons, actually, from both sides of the aisle on the timeline here. And I'll just reiterate the timeline quickly. Uh, on November 6th, FTX Group was facing a liquidity crisis. On November 8th, FTX withdrawals were halted. On November 9th, Mr. Bankman fried sent an email to the Attorney General of the Bahamas saying the Bahamanian customers could make withdrawals as they had, quote, segregated funds for all Bahamanian customers, end quote, despite his awareness of FTX's withdrawal halt. And then on November 10th, two days after withdrawals were halted, nearly $100 million in cryptocurrency was withdrawn by those, quote, asserting to be Bahamanian customers. Um, and then, quite conveniently, for Mr. Bankman Fried's counsel, uh, he is arrested right before he was due to provide hours worth of sworn testimony to Congress. Um, Mr. Ray, do we have your commitment that as you continue to unravel these, these, this ball of yarn and, and pull on these re relative threads here, that if you find any evidence of improper collusion between Mr. Bankman Fried and any authorities in the Bahamas or elsewhere, that you will make that known to us? Absolutely. Thank you. And I want to close uh, really with comments directly to the, to the broader industry here. Um, and I've long said that I'm neither a crypto bull nor a bear. Uh, my job as a policymaker is not to deliver new products or, or technology, but rather to advance laws and regulations that protect consumers, that preserve market integrity, and advance the US dollar as the world's reserve currency. And I maintain this market and tech agnostic position. I think it's the appropriate one. We need strong and clear regulations here from Washington. But I do want to say that my patience with the crypto bulls is wearing thin. It's been 14 years, and the American public has heard lots of promises, but it has seen lots of Ponzi schemes. For crypto, it's time to put up or shut up. It's worth noting that ARK, the innovation investor, several years ago identified five general purpose technologies of the future. DNA sequencing, artificial intelligence, robotics, energy storage, and blockchain. And yet those first four, disruptive technologies have already delivered game-changing innovation that affects my constituents in daily life. Blockchain has thus far delivered white papers and podcasts about Bitcoin and DAOs and NFTs, DeFi and more. And it's all interesting, it's exciting even, but none of it has achieved product market fit at scale. And it's time for the blockchain investors and entrepreneurs to build things that matter or to lose more credibility. 